Entertainment. I'm miserable. Absolutely miserable. I've been up since 5.30 in the morning. Instead of going to sleep, which is what I plan to do, I decided to stand up and watch SmackDown. Because I wanted to see the, the draft. I wanted to see what was going to happen on this show. But I, I said to myself, get in your way back machine. If you like hearing the sound of my voice, go back April 28th, 2023. When I made an episode called Scrap the Draft. I'm doubling down. This is Scrap the Draft. Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. I hate the draft. Alright? I hate it. I hate everything about it. It sucks. The entire concept is nosebleed. It sucks. Yes. Thoroughly. Through a straw. It's it's the stupidest concept. Bro, I, I mentally checked out of this draft. Eight picks in. Because... Eight picks in, five of the picks were people who were already on the brand. Five of the picks of the first eight were already on the brand that picked them. What is the point of that? Why are... Oh, yeah. We're going to keep Bianca Belair on, on SmackDown. Hooray? She was already there. Hooray! Oh, Jay Uso, the number one pick, huh? Really? Is that so? He's the most important person outside of Bianca Belair to have on your roster. Is that so? I'm supposed to believe that? There's no 12-year-old that believes that. This is stupid of the entire thing. There's only one surprise. Kiana James being drafted to Monday Night Raw. It was excellent. She was one of those girls that was very good in NXT. Probably never going to be the champion. But it's solid enough that she doesn't need to be down there anymore. I legitimately very happy for her. And then she cuts a promo and she's just, I'm just so happy to be here. None of the character that she's been showing for two years. You know, the boss bitch character she's been having for a little while. Now, now she just kind of went back to kayfabe fan. Like, oh, I'm just so excited. I'm going to show Monday Night Raw what I can do. I'm like, ugh. Ugh, what is this? Where's Keanu James? Where's the character I've been watching on NXT for two years? This this draft, this draft, man, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. It sucked, all right? It sucks. It sucks so bad, I don't know what to do with myself, all right? If you like this, I question, I question your intelligence. There's just no way. You can look at this and say, 90% of the people are drafted to brands they're already on. And you're like, that was very exciting. It was, was it? You, you drafted Carmelo Hayes to SmackDown and then beat him immediately. He's already been on SmackDown losing, by the way. And then what is the point of, of drafting NXT talent when NXT talent pops up randomly in June anyway? Like, what? What, what is this? Guys, it's going to pop up in November. So, like, if, if it's a draft, then NXT should be your NCAA. That's the only place you should be drafting from. Then you could do a supplemental draft where NXT gets to replenish their roster from the mid-cards of SmackDown and Raw. It's a simple concept. You pluck out all, this, you know, a lot of pieces out of NXT. You know, I'm not saying 100 people. I'm saying more like 15, and you populate them into the mid card of Raw and SmackDown, split between the two brands. So about eight and eight, or eight and seven, or something like that. And that's graduation night. All those people go from NXT to Raw or SmackDown. Then on NXT, they have a draft where they start drafting from the mid card of SmackDown and Raw, people that they don't have on their roster already. That gives an opportunity for people like Cedric Alexander. And Apollo Crews. And all those kinds of people. To be brought into NXT. And then the rosters are locked. And you don't bring up random NXT talent in August. Because who cares. If you draft an NXT talent. On this draft. If they can pop up in September. Without being fully drafted. What is the point of drafting them? 
if a random guy is just going to pop up in May, who cares about this draft? This is supposed to lock your rosters in for the year. Oh, you can't draft the champions. Okay. I'm not going to argue with that. You can't draft Roman Reigns either, though. What? If Roman Reigns can just voluntarily not do it, who's to say anybody can just voluntarily be like, you know what? I'm going to pass. I'm going to stay where I am. <sighs> oh, I hate this draft so much. Uh... I hate it with the heat of a thousand suns, man. I, I hate what these things mean, man. I it was more important for you to draft Liv Morgan than AJ Styles, man. That's what this thing is telling me. That Liv Morgan is more important to your roster than AJ Styles, brother. Get out of here with that. It's not. No. Your war rooms. Random people. Nobody knows who these folks are. Who is this black woman with this wig? In the Raw War Room. Who is she? Auntie. Who are you? What exactly do you do here? How are you making the picks? <laughs> what is this? Why are you so disappointed that Ricochet got drafted Smackdown side? Why? Nobody cares about Ricochet. Nobody. Why are you like, oh, Ricochet. Man, we missed out on that one. What are you talking about? Nobody cares about that dude. He's literally a Twitter wrestler now. Nobody cares about him. This draft sucks, man. This is this is so stupid. I mean, imagine having a draft. And you draft Bianca Belair and Carmelo Hayes before Randy Orton. Just get, just get out of here, man. Just just go. Go and take everything you came with which get out of here. Just get this shit out of here, man. I don't want to talk about this no more. <laughs> this is stupid draft. This is stupid. All right? The draft is stupid. It's just dumb. I don't care. You can say, oh, it's just poorly executed. Maybe. But the execution is everything. But then the presenters didn't have 99% of the presenters are okay. But then there's that one. And that one this year, Tori Wilson. She came out, she looked like Duckman. I don't know what was going on with her. I just, she looked like the Crypt Keeper with lip fillers. She was oddly shaped. And I was like, why? Why does she look like she sits in the house all day smoking cigarettes? <sighs> she reminded me, not as bad, of Bruce the Barber Beefcake's wife. Where she was probably, we know that she was very, very hot when she was young. But now I'm like, She's aging really bad. She's aging really bad. And uh, it's sad to see. And I did—I don't want to be sitting here having this conversation right now. With me talking about how bad Tori look, Wilson looked up there. She didn't look great. Alright. She didn't look great. And I was just like. This is terrible. This is like when I saw Missy Hyatt. Again. <laughs> I was like. Ugh. Like, they all get old, man. And it's not the fact that she got old. It's that some parts of her body are older than others. That's the problem. She not aging everywhere at the same time. That's the problem. I don't even want to talk about the draft no more. Okay, I don't want to talk about the draft no more. You're going to move on. You're going to move forward. Let's talk about this, uh, this AJ Styles, Cody Rose thing. Because... They told me that these two guys are going to be face-to-face -face next week. That's what they said. Cody Rose, AJ Styles, face-to-face -face next week. Well, they was face-to-face -face twice today. They was face-to-face -face twice already. They cut a promo on each other, and then they were face-to-face -face in, in the main event of the show. What are they going to be face-to-face -face with again for? For what? They, got, they didn't see enough of each other's face? They missed the contours of each other's face already? They need to be uh, reminded who their opponent's going to be. What's the point of that? It's stupid. Anyway, this is about Dusty. Because every Cody Rose storyline is about Dusty. AJ Styles respects Dusty. Dusty gave him some good advice. Dusty taught him how to be a champion. and How to carry the weight of a title. And he doesn't think Cody Rose can carry the weight of a title. 
Cody Rose says, everybody respects AJ Styles, himself included, but the mutual respect is going out of the window at Backlash because the guy who taught AJ Styles about the weight of a championship taught him that it's not about winning the title, it's about keeping it, and for him, this match is a must win. And I'm like, man, Cody, okay, it's a must win, brother, I, I guess. And then they shook meaty hands. And I was like, yeah, this is bullshit. But, funny, the cranberry suit for Cody. I was very impressed. I, I liked the suit. The suit was very nice. It, it looked like he got ironed with him in it, but it, it looked very nice. R well done, Coates. Then we get Carmelo Hayes. He comes out there, cuts a the promo about how he don't miss. Then he promptly misses. And then in that match, Cody Rose damn near tore his bicep or something like that. Because he's wrestling for no reason in a match he does not need to win against an opponent he does not need to beat in a situation he does not need to be in that does not really further anybody's story. So you got cocky heel ish Carmelo Hayes and he gets humbled immediately. So how is he going to get over? So in six months when he barely gets a reaction, just remember they didn't give him any momentum. He, he was losing on his way onto the roster. And then he gets on the roster, promptly challenges Cody, and then loses again. Which is, this is fresh off the two losses to Trick Williams. So, instead of giving him a match he can win, instead of showing vignettes of him doing cool stuff, we had Cody beat him. Because that was good for business. This is stupid. Next, Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee defeat Angel um Umberto because the Mexican Civil War is never going to end. It is the few that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friends. And, and the new twist, the twist that's not really a twist, we find out that Carlito was the guy who attacked Dragon Lee. And guess what? He attacked Dragon Lee again! He attacked him again because guess what? That's Carlito's gimmick. It's always been Carlito's gimmick. He's a backstabber. That's literally the name of his finisher move. <laughs> his entire gimmick is he's a backfighter and he can't be trusted. That's his entire gimmick. But the execution of this was kind of lazy. It didn't really go for what they were expecting. You know, I like how Santos gave the the clout to Electra Lopez. Like she did the groundwork of finding the footage and getting the footage out there. And it took her a little while. It took about a month. But she finally got it. Carlito was very surprised. Like, who is that guy with that giant afro, that handsome man with the giant afro? He looks very familiar. <laughs> Clearly it's you. Uh Ray can't keep a friend. My, my goodness. I could just imagine Ray Mysterio. He goes down to the dog pound. He rescues a puppy. Ten years later, the dog just bites him on that goddamn ankle. Like, ah! Because nobody likes this guy for long periods of time. He's going to take the dog, take the dog away, adopt a cat. One day, the cat just going to scratch his eyeball out. It's like, God damn, Ray. What is it about you that everybody who gets to know you intimately hates your guts? I'm starting to ask questions like, how much of a baby face are you if everybody's turning on you? Even your own son. What's next? Angie going to be slapping him in the face on television? Poor Ray. Poor, poor down and out Ray. Brian Breaker. Oh my goodness. He had the worst theme song of all time. It's very shotgun Saturday night. I mean, it's the worst. That Def Rebel stuff is the shit. To say it's the shit. It's offensive to shit. All right. I can't think of a word. I can't think of a synonym. You know, it's like sludge, sewage, toxic waste, you know, uh, discharge, like pus that, that comes out of like a, a black head on your face or something like that. Whatever is the grossest liquid you can think of. That's the shit. That Death Rebel makes these songs with. They just mix it with blood. And just throw it out there. It's, it's garbage man. 
this is garbage. It's dogs barking in this thing. Why are there dogs barking in this? It's like the British Bulldogs theme song from like Shotgun Saturday Night. Who's it like randomly dogs barking? It's like alarms and dogs barking. It's like I thought this was supposed to be a song. This sounds like a seven mile. You know, like what is going on here? There's police cars and Rottweilers barking. Like what the, what's going on, man? Is it the hood or is this the interest theme? Like what's what is this? And he, he's wrestling Cedric Alexander. Okay, this match is going to go the grand total of 42 seconds. I'm surprised Cedric Alexander even has a job. This guy been in WWE for 10 years, believe it or not. I believe they signed him in like 2015, maybe 2016. So maybe it's coming up on 10 years. Chief. <laughs> Chief, really. Uh, I'm not saying that he needs to be fired. I'm not saying that. I would think... Cedric Alexander would be a great guy for you to send to NXT to, to revitalize the division. When they fired Mustafa Ali for being a dickhead, he should have brought in Cedric Alexander to take his spot. I think he's perfect for NXT. You know? Great talent. You know? They could have done more with him. But now he's dog food. Like, literally. Next, we got Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany Stratton wants a championship match because she beat up Naomi and Bailey. Of course, she's not going to get that because heels don't get what they want. Instead, she has to wrestle Naomi in a number one contenders match for Backlash. So they, they book that match and then they do it. They put Bailey at ringside and then Bailey promptly gets her shit kicked in by Nia Jax. So Nia Jax just decides, because she's on SmackDown now, because that's a big game changer. She beats up Bailey. She beats up Naomi. Tiffany Stratton does a moonsault on both of them. And so you would think Nia Jax would be in the conversation for a women's championship as she beat up Bailey. No. Nope. Not, not at all. Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, and Bailey is the triple threat match for the championship. I, I don't care. Poor Naomi. They're doing what they can, I guess. <laughs> They're doing what they can. I don't know. So it's Sokoa. He comes, he's very upset because the, the bloodline has not been drafted. Why does he care about that? And he wants an explanation about why they haven't been drafted yet. At this point, the bloodline hadn't been drafted but Liv Morgan, Jay Uso, and Ricochet had been. So, I'm sorry, Solo. We have more important things to get to. So, Solo Sokoa, he's very upset. Paul Heyman tries to explain to him that Roman Reigns kind of killed this thing because he pulled himself out of the draft. And says, you're changing the lineup of the bloodline. There is some cautiousness there. We don't know what we're going to get. And then he just gets assaulted by Kevin Owens. And they're fighting. And then Randy Orton helps Kevin Owens because Randy Orton can't work singles matches. No wonder he fell down to like fifth place or whatever in the draft. And <clears throat> they decided to book in their infinite genius. Kevin Owens and Randy Orton versus Tama Tonga and Solo Sikoa. I am going to Earl, bro. Why is Kevin Owens in this situation? Haven't we had an haven't we suffered enough? Haven't we suffered enough? Like uh, this is bad. This is all around bad, dog. I'm in a bad mood. This this sucks. This blows this blows chunks, brother. It's not good. It ain't good. Bianca Belair, she's gorgeous as ever. An absolute Amazon standing next to uh, Kayla Braxton. I mean, she looks like a different breed of creature standing next to Kayla Braxton. I'm pretty sure it's not the heels because Kayla Braxton's wearing heels too. But she talked about damage control because that's another feud that never ends is the two-year odyssey of Bianca Belair and damage control. My goodness, Luffy could find the one piece before this fucking thing ends. This thing is never over. So, it's already announced that she 
And Jade Cargill will be wrestling damage control with the tag team titles. And she thinks that this is going to be the end finally. Her and Jade are going to win the belts. And then she's finally going to be done with damage control. Had you fooled. Damage control or the Kabuki Warriors, they come out because they just need to dance and mock Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. Nobody's going to touch each other. But they have to show you that the match is going to be a thing. So they put their hand, they put the belts up, blah, 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 blah. And they're just all looking at each other, oily and everything. So they're at, I'm not mad at this, though, because this at least is sensible. It's something they've been building to. I'm honestly on the fence about Bianca and Jade winning. I don't think Jade should win a title so soon. I'm not sure how you do it because I don't want either one of these teams to lose. Maybe you have damage control get disqualified. But then I would put that match on SmackDown rather than put it at the pay-per-view. Because I don't think Jade Cargill winning a title that quickly. And then once you give the belts to the Twin Towers, it's pretty much over for the rest of the tag team division, right? You just got Jade and Bianca steamrolling everybody for who knows how long. So I would wait to give them the belts. But... Build some anticipation. You know, don't give people that thing immediately. I guess that's what the WrestleMania match was about. It was about, you know, making sure that there was some anticipation being built. Next. Next. Karen Cross and the Final Testament decided they was going to beat up Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate, which only depressed me because it means I have to watch Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. I don't even want to see them get beat up. That's how little I care about these guys. I don't. You could put plastic bags over their heads. You could throw them in a wood chipper. They couldn't get an ounce of sympathy out of me. I don't care about these guys at all. I don't like them. They suck. I'm not quite saying fire them into the sun yet. I'm saying, you know, give them the wrong address to the arena next time. You know? Tell them you're going to meet them somewhere and then just don't show up. You know? Oh, I forgot to book you. Like, supposedly, Zelina Vega was... They forgot to book her for a show once. Oh, snap! You were supposed to be on that show. Eight times in a row or something. Anyway. Karrion Cross. My goodness. I remember talking about how this guy should, be, should have been WWE champion. I thought Vince was going to love him. And the crowd was going to really attach themselves to them. And he's going to get the rocket strapped to his back. And that did not happen. He got, not only did he get beat, he lose to Jeff Hardy, and that kind of made him look a little silly. The Adam Cole thing made him look a little silly. But he comes back, and they start to immediately build some character, and then they start killing him. He loses to Nakamura, loses to Styles, loses to Rey Mysterio, loses to this guy, loses to that guy, loses to goddamn Bobby Lashley, can't buy a win. He literally is... Just a guy on the roster, you know, with his size and his ability to talk and his facial expressions and all this kind of stuff. He loses more matches than Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. That's booking wrestling one on one in our modern wrestling space. Karrion Cross loses more than Tyler Bate. It's, it's, that's just kind of how it is, brother. That sucks. It was nice seeing Teddy Long again. I should say that. That was very nice. So that's SmackDown. It's trash. Garbage. You know, on the day Vince sells the last of his stock, they decided to just take an airplane and run it right into the goddamn building. Because, you know, who cares anymore? Nobody cares, right? So uh, in terms of news and notes, uh, Death Rebel. Apparently, <laughs> wrestling fans are something else. They're a completely different breed of fan, right? I wouldn't know Def Rebel if they walked up to me and smacked me in the face. But apparently, some fans know them so well that they recognize this guy who apparently got into it with an Uber driver, accused the Uber driver of being an anti-Semite falsely. I don't know if the guy if it was false or not. But apparently now they want the, the Death Rebel guy fired. Now, according to the situation from my understanding, and I don't have, I've had a very limited understanding, 
he had a very large family and was trying to get into an Uber and his family was too big and the driver could not carry all of those passengers. And he decided that he was going to flip that into they all look Jewish or something stupid like that, which he probably is. Turns out Sean Ross Sapp did just a little bit of dig and find out this guy doesn't work with Def Rebel anymore. Apparently he hasn't worked there in a while. Um, so there's not much you can do except say that he's their shitty people as well as shitty music producers. But you can look at that kind of guy and just look at him. Look at the state of him, the face of him, and say, do this guy look like he makes good music? But he won four Grammys, Mongo. I don't care about that. Fire those Grammys out of a cannon. Who cares? He sucks. Death Rebel sucks as a collective and as solo. They suck. Get rid of them. Do all you can to get rid of them. Listening to the music on this show is absolutely... The Brian Breaker theme has pushed it over the edge. All right? I'm over the edge. I don't care what you do to Steph Rebel at this point. You can fire them, fillet them, or whatever you want. They got to go. All right? They, they got to go. I've, 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 you have my stamp of approval. All right? It's a blank stamp. If they disappear tomorrow, I ain't going to say nothing. You can bury them in a batch of honey for all I care. I don't care. I just want the, this part of the product to be fixed. And then worry about all the stupid stuff Triple H is doing. Then we, we can figure that part out. <laughs> all right. But this was SmackDown. It was terrible. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you guys later. Ban the draft. Get rid of the draft. We're all going to be okay without it. We'll be fine without that dumbass draft. Uh-huh.